Yo, what's up, guys? So our original intro got corrupted, so I'm reshooting that thing. This movie was, well, I'm not gonna spoil it, man, but if this is your first time watching, definitely stay towards the end. This movie has a really weird twist, to say the least, man. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me interrupt myself real quick. Alrighty, folks, before we get back into the video, let me take a second to tell you guys about Rocket Money. So guys, we watch movies for a living and we have a ton of streaming services. And to be honest, we are not the best at keeping track or managing them. Luckily for me, man, I really don't have to stress because today's sponsor Rocket Money is here to help. Rocket Money is the app you need to save more and manage your money better. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. We love using Rocket Money in our lives to cancel unwanted subscriptions. Safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple of taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $740 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Another way we use Rocket Money to lower our bills is by simply uploading a photo of our bill, tapping a few buttons, and Rocket Money will actually negotiate the bill for you. Guys, that's anything from internet service to cable to a phone bill. Get the tools that you guys need to achieve financial freedom, guys. Just head over to rocketmoney.com slash Octobers. Go try it out today. That's rocketmoney.com slash Octobers to get started for free. Guys, seriously, I really do like this app. It, it helps us a lot. Go go download it. Use it. It's really helpful. You'll thank yourself. Let's get back into the movie. Pulp. A soft, moist, shapeless, massive matter. A magazine or book containing lurid subject matter and being characteristically printed on rough, unfinished paper. Okay. It. It's too risky. I'm doing that shit. You always say that. The same thing every time. I know, that's what I always say. I'm always right, too. But you forget about that's it. That's the guy. Too? That yeah, feels like a month. It takes me to remember it. I've just begun. What was that? You know when you go on like this what you sound like? You sound like a sensible f***ing man. That's what I sound like. like a duck. Like. Can I get anyone more coffee? Oh, yes. That was so well, awkward, wasn't it? It was kind. Taking the same risk as when you rob a bank. Taking more of a risk. Banks are easier. The bloke on the other end of the phone says, we got this guy's little girl. If you don't give him all your money, we're going to kill her. Did they hurt the little girl? I don't know. There, there probably never no. was a little girl in the first place. Yeah. But the point <laughs> of the story isn't a little girl. The point of the story is, they robbed a bank with a telephone. You want to rob banks? And no more liquor stores? Besides, it ain't a giggle it used to be. It's too many foreigners own liquor stores. Vietnamese, <laughs> Koreans. I tell them, empty out the register. They don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's going to make us kill them. I'm not going to kill anybody. I don't want to so kill anybody. That's like Bonnie either. and Clyde right there. But huh? probably right. put us in a situation where it's us or them. <laughs> Grandpa Irving. Sitting by the, behind the counter with a fucking magnum in his hand. Yeah, well, what then? Day jobs? Not in this life. What then? Garçon, coffee! Look at him smoking a cig in the, in the building. Wild. Back in the day, huh? A coffee shop. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Same as banks, these places are insured. Customers sitting there with food in their mouths. They don't know what's going on. One minute, they're having a Denver omelette. Next minute, someone's sticking a gun in their face. <laughs> that sucks. See, I got the idea. A lot of people come to restaurants. A lot of wallets. Pretty smart, huh? I'm ready. Let's do it right now, right here. She's impulsive. But Same this is a 94 movie because no one carries cash. Control. I handle employees. What do you say? No one carries cash anymore like that. Right. And I'll execute every motherfucking last <laughs> one of you. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Don't you think the Black Eyed Peas are about to be in it, but they're not? <laughs> oh, they're not? What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> Cowabunga, bro. That was a crazy opening, though, right? Yeah. Man had a point. Just rob restaurants, everybody. Don't tell it's them. It's actually it. dumb. Don't do it. I used to manage one. It's stupid. I know. Man made out with like 220. <laughs> no. One time I made money from a robbery. I was like, what the heck? Stupid. <laughs> In 94, no one knew it was going to be remixed. <laughs> You know, that's one of the saddest things about getting older. You realize everything that's great is actually just a remake of something <laughs> else. Do we know any of those folks? Yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Duh, because he made it. And we were two when this came out. Oh, yeah. I remember this song. I don't. I don't know. Was this on George of the Jungle? Yeah, comment below, man. Let us know. What is the first song you ever remember hearing? Mine's Chattahoochee by uh, Alan Jackson. What's yours? My two earliest memories is uh, that Uncle Cracker song. Follow me. And then okay. Nelly. So tell me again about the half car. Okay, what you want to know? <laughs> yeah, that's just legal, man, right? That was my jam. legal, but ain't 100% legal. I mean, you just can't walk into a restaurant, roll the joint, and start puffing away. They're talking they about Mary Gondra? They want you home or certain designated places. If you get stopped by a cop in Amsterdam, it's illegal for them to search you. I mean, that's the right the cops in Amsterdam don't have. Oh, man. I'm going. That's all it is to it. I'm fucking going. <laughs> no, baby. <laughs> you dig it the most. You dig it the most. You know what the funniest thing about Europe is? What? It's a little differences. 
I mean, they got the same shit over there that they got here, but it's just, just there, it's a little different. Example. <laughs> All right, well, you can walk into a movie theater in Amsterdam and buy a beer. And I don't mean just like a little paper cup, I'm talking about a glass of beer. And in Paris, you can buy a beer in McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh, man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the f a quarter pounder is. <laughs> what do they call it? They call it uh, the Royale with cheese. Why do you Royale know that? Royale with cheese. <laughs> That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. Le Big Mac. Because it's got some French in there or something. What do they call a Whopper? I don't know. I didn't go on a Burger King. <laughs> you know what they put on French fries in Holland instead of ketchup? Or what? Mayonnaise? Yummy. Yeah. shot. They do that in a lot of cultures. That's yeah. disgusting. Mayonnaise is underrated. We should have shotguns with this kind of deal. Help me up there. Three or four. Let's count our guy. Not you. So that means it could be up to five guys up there? It's possible. <laughs> Oh, is there cops? What's her name? Mia. Mia. She used to be an actress. Did she do anything out of scene? And I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. Pilot? What's a pilot? <laughs> well, you know the shows on TV? I don't watch TV. Well, the way they pick TV shows is they make one show. That show's called a pilot. Some get chosen and become television programs. Some don't come nothing. The origin. She starred in one of the ones that became nothing. You didn't know that? No. You remember if I were to watch this, I would have known. Half black, half Samoan. Used to call him Tony Rocky Howard. Yeah, maybe fat, right? I wouldn't go so far as to call the brother fat. I mean, he got a weight problem. He's Samoan. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. What about him? Well, Marcellus fucked him up good. Word around the campfire is it was on account of Marcellus Wallace's wife. His hair looks so crazy. They kind of look iconic no, 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 no. for some reason. I feel like I've seen them like this before. Gave her a foot massage. He looks like he'd be an in sync or something. <laughs> foot massage. That's it. Mm hmm. Then what Marcellus do? Sent a couple of cats over to his place. They took him out on his patio, threw his ass over the balcony. Fell full stories. Had a little garden down at the bottom, closed in glass like a greenhouse. Fell through that. Since then, I cut he up. developed a speech impediment. <laughs> a speech impediment? You don't be giving Marcellus Wallace's new bride a foot massage. You don't think he overreacted? Well, yeah, that's why I probably didn't expect Marcellus to react the way he did, but... He had to expect a reaction. It was a foot massage. Right. A foot massage is nothing. I give my mother a foot massage. He's laying your hands in a familiar way on Marcellus's new wife. And eating a bitch out and giving a foot massage ain't even the same thing. It's not. It's close. It's it's close. <laughs> ain't no fucking ballpark neither. Now look, hey, let us know. Massage, <laughs> but foot massages don't mean shit. Have you ever given a foot massage? Ain't a foot massage just a bridge? They mean a lot me over here. Foot massages. I'm the foot fucking master. Let me tell them. Giving a lot of <laughs> shit. Yeah. Got my technique down and everything. I don't be tickling enough. Would you give a guy a foot massage? Mm. No. Thank you. He won the argument. <laughs> You know, I'm kind of tired. I can use a foot massage myself. Yo, 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 man, you best back off. I'm getting a little pissed here. What time you got? 7.22 in the a.m. No, oh, ain't quite time yet. Come on, let's hang back. <laughs> that is early to be coming up at someone's house, man. Now look, just because I wouldn't get no man a foot massage, don't make it right for myself to throw Antoine off a building into a glass mother. House. I mean, you if that guy's saying? the type of guy that can throw you from a window, just stay away from him. <laughs> and his wife, especially. Come on. Better have some pretty feet, some OnlyFans feet. <laughs> What's her name again? It's like 723 yeah. now. <laughs> so interested in big man's wife. Well, he's going out of town in Florida, and he asked me if I'd take care of her while he's gone. Take care? No, man. Take her out, you know. Show her a good time. Is he talking about the same girl? Room. Yeah. You're gonna That's why he's worried. Your Wallace out on a date. It is not a date. It's like if you were going to take your buddy's wife to a movie or something. Just good company, that's all. Abnormal. <laughs> Was this a 94 thing? <laughs> I ain't never it's had a buddy a like that. <laughs> Definitely not a date. And she's the type to accept foot massages. Hey, kids. How you boys doing? Hey, keep chilling. <laughs> Why? You know who we are? We're associates of your business partner, Marcellus Wallace. You do remember your business partner, don't you? Now, let me take a wild guess here. His cut said the Kona. I know. <laughs> You remember your business partner, Marcellus Wallace, don't you, Brett? Yeah, I, I remember. Good. Looks like me and Vincent caught you boys at breakfast. Did you have it? Hamburger. Hamburgers! Big Kahuna Burger. Big Kahuna Burger. That's that Is Hawaiian that burger up? joint. I hear they got some tasty That sounds burgers. like some big I ball burger. I never had one myself. How are they? Good. You mind if I try one of yours? This is yours here, right? No, you're not. Oh, we did. You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in France? <laughs> Royale. Come on, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. You know why they call it that? Because of the metric system. <laughs> Check out the big brain on bread. Big brain bread, boy. That's right. The metric system. <laughs> I want to start cussing more like him. 
Sprite. Sprite, good. You mind if I have some of your tasty beverage to wash this down? What? <laughs> Anytime you get Sprite at a restaurant like that, it don't taste right. It tastes different, don't mm -hmm. it? Dang. You know why we're here? Why don't you tell my man Vince here where you got the shit here at? It's over there. It's I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sit with us. It's in the cupboard. No, no, the one by your knees. That one guy's just laying on the couch like that, eating a cheeseburger. Um, I big so cool indigestion. At 7.22 a.m. <laughs> that means they had to get those around 6.45. <laughs> Six eighty-six. We happy? Yeah, we happy. Look, why are these I'm bros sorry, holding uh, it? <laughs> I, I didn't get your name. I got yours, uh, Vincent, right? But but I, I never got your. My name. name's Pitt, and your ass ain't talking your way out of it. <laughs> I just want you to know how sorry we are. When we we got into this thing with the best intentions, really. I never. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please. Continue. You were saying something about best intentions. So these ain't no cops. I mean, I sort What's of put matter? that together since they're working for some dudes. Oh, but you were finished. Oh well, allow me to retort. I don't know. <laughs> what does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What country you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of? <laughs> they speak English and what? What? English, mother. Do you speak it? Yes. <laughs> then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, mother. Say what one more goddamn time. Bro, he'll do it. He's black. Go on. He's bald. <laughs> Does he look like a? What? <laughs> I didn't Does mean to. He look like a. No. Then why you try to him like a? Brett. Yes, oh. you did. Yes, you did, Brett. And Marcellus Wallace don't like to be by anybody except Mrs. Wallace. <laughs> you read the Bible, Brett? Yes. Well, there's this passage I got memorized. Sort of fits this occasion. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. Oh, For he is right truly now. his and brother's now. keeper and the finder oh. of lost children. <laughs> And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. Nick and you will anger. know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. He had that whole thing memorized too. Probably got it tatted on his back or something. Vincent Vega and Marcellus Wallace's wife. I think you're gonna find, I think you're gonna find yourself one smiling mother <laughs> And your days are just about over. Now that's a hard fact of life, <laughs> size Butch. How many fights do you think you got in you anyway? Two? Boxers don't have an old time stick. Oh, she's a boxer. You came close, like. but you never made it. And if you were gonna make it, you would have made it before now. What's that remind you of? Daredevil. Mm -hmm. Just like it ain't it. Night of the fight, you may feel a slight sting. That's pride. Fuck. Pride. Pride only hurts. So he's got the Nelly Band-Aid on the back of his head, huh? In the fifth, your ass goes down. Say it. Fifth, my ass goes down. So Marcellus is up there, huh? He's controlling boxing. He's got hitman. He's rich. Yeah, absolutely. Have you met me? Not yet. <laughs> it's a big man's wife. I'm gonna sit across from her, chew my food, my mouth closed, laugh at her f***ing jokes, and that's it. Hey, my name's Paul. This is between y'all. <laughs> You better just keep them hands away from them toes. <laughs> you pack of red apples. Build this. Right. Red apples. You looking at something, friend? You ain't my friend, Paluka. Some Vegas in the house? Jazz over here. What's with his t-shirt he has on, though? <laughs> Samuel Jackson be saying that word with a hard ER, I though, don't you? Bro, you gonna mess around and get my channel messed up. <laughs> You better start putting that A on the end. All my piercing, 18 places on my body. Everyone been done with a needle. <laughs> Five in each ear. One to the nipple on my left breast. Ow. Two in my right nostril, one in my left eyebrow. I was just curious, but um, why would you wear a stud in your tongue? Helps fellatio. Vincenzo, step in my office. <laughs> what in the world? What the heck? But this one is a little more expensive. This is 500 a gram. 500? But when you shoot it, you will know where that extra money went. Now there's nothing wrong with these two. This is real good shit. But this one is a fucking madman. Man, doing drugs is too expensive, ain't it? Oh, that's heroin? He says shoot it. It looked like coke to me. Yeah, you snort that. Madman. Okay. If it's as good as you say it is, I'll come back and buy another thousand. Well, I'm giving you some out of my own 
private stash. That what is a, a buddy. Nice guy I am. Ash B. And out of balloons. <laughs> is the baggie all right? Honey, will you get me some baggies and uh, Twistix from the kitchen? <laughs> what are those? Those heels? Yeah. yeah. What do you think about Trudy? She ain't got a boyfriend. You want to uh, hang out? Which one's Trudy? I want all the shit in her face. No, that's Jody. That's my wife. <laughs> 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 Man, thank you. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm, I gotta be someplace. All right, no problem. I'll take a rain check. That's the one with all this stuff in her rain. <laughs> Still got your Malibu? Oh man, you know that looks like your scissors, the else. Other day? <laughs> what? Don't it? I wish I could have caught him doing it. It'd have been worth him doing it, just so I could have caught him doing it. That's five hundred dollars worth. Man, and prices are so inflated right, now. Up here. Hey, mi casa, su casa. I'm just shocked about how expensive that is. <laughs> that's one thing I've never had to say. That better be for like six times. I feel like that's the movie way. I don't know if that's what you do in real life. I feel like if I asked my dad what's your favorite movie today, I don't think he'd say this. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's grown up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just our dads are like grandparents. They're now. like grandparents, yeah. They're not watching people shoot up. <laughs> <laughs> shoot up and shoot up. You know what I'm saying? The statues are dope, though. They're like, hmm. That one looks like he's about to shoot somebody. I still think he's like, hmm, in this garden. Oh, here's the date. Oh, date. Hi, Vincent. I'm getting dressed. Doors open. Come inside and make yourself a drink. Hell no. Nope. Them boys in the garden better be your boys. Mm -mm. The man's about to start hanging out, handing out FJs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when that girl said she didn't clip Vincent. her toenails? <laughs> I'm on the intercom. That's a meme. Push the button if you want to talk. Hello. Go make yourself a drink and I'll be down in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> the bar's by the fireplace. Okay. She's stressing me out. I, I know, feel this vibe <laughs> making me want to take my jacket off. What's going on? <laughs> She's like trapping them or something. Very weird. She's like, him and my feet are going to be a thing today. <laughs> <laughs> she said, mm, I'm about to get these toes pulled on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the infamous feet. <laughs> Let's go. Kind of dirty, but not bad. <laughs> this is Jack Rabbit Slims. An Elvis man should love it. Come on, man. Let's go get a steak. You can get a steak here, daddy-o. Don't be a... <laughs> a rectangle. Oh, after you, kitty cat. Dang, they got editing in this movie. Don't be a rectangle. Didn't I say that to you one time? Don't be a square. You had no idea what that's going Oh, well, that was not a square. That was a rectangle. My bad. Yeah, I think that's what she meant. Bikers pulling up. Hey, no, that's where she wants to go. She's wild. <laughs> There's a reservation under Wallace. Wallace? We reserved a car. Oh, car. Why don't you see them over there in the Chrysler? I like the music in this movie, though. Man, them umbrellas inside is kind of like sunglasses inside. Right. Threw me off. I like it. I like the vibe in here. It's cool. That's the guy that stole the dance from Forrest Gump. Oh, Elvis? Oh, there's Marilyn Monroe, for real. That's so cool. They're like eating in a, in a car. It's like a table. But if you're in his mental state right now, you know, knowing what he just did, that would be crazy in there. Mm -hmm. That's back when the diner was king, huh? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think it's like a wax museum with a pulse. That's cool. Right, buddy, what can I get you? She's like mayonnaise and spread it on my feet. Steak, mm -hmm. steak, steak, steak. Oh yeah, oh, there's Douglas Sirk steaks. How that? How do you want that cooked? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell? Bloody <laughs> as hell and oh yeah, look at this, vanilla coke. I'll have the mm -hmm. Durward Kirby burger. No woman chooses bloody. that quick. And $5 she, shake. She's like a regular there, she knows about it. Did you just order a $5 shake? Mm-hmm. You don't put bourbon in or nothing? <laughs> No. Just checking. That's expensive back then, huh? I know, it sounds like cheap now. <laughs> Could you um, roll me one of those, cowboy? How can he do that in there? Cowgirl. Thanks. Is this California? Pick nothing up. I don't think that's weed. I think that's just filterless. Because they asked him earlier, filters or no. But he's like no. rolling it? <laughs> People roll that. Well, so People roll those. Just got back from it's not Amsterdam. always weed. Oh. Sure did. How long were you there? <laughs> I heard you did a pilot. It was a show about a team of female secret agents called Fox Force 5. What? 
Fox Force 5. Fox is in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force <laughs> is in we're a force to be reckoned with. And five is in there's one, two, three, four, five of us. There was a blonde one, Somerset O'Neill. She was a leader. And Somerset. <laughs> the Japanese fox was a kung fu master. French fox's speciality was sex. <laughs> what was your special? Knives. According to the show, she was the deadliest woman in the world with a knife. And Who she knows? knew a zillion old jokes. Tell me. It's corny. Don't be that way. Tell me. Nah, you wouldn't like it and I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> You'd be emb You told like 50 million people and you can't tell me? I promise I won't laugh. That's what I'm afraid of, Vince. Mm -hmm. That's not what I meant. You know it. Now I'm definitely not going to tell you because it's been <laughs> built up too much. <sighs> what a jip. A jip? A gypsy. Wow. Martin and Lewis. Remember that store boss, the drunken gypsy? Mm -hmm. What's a Martin and Lewis, y'all? What is that? I don't know that one. Yummy. Does it mean with a cherry yeah, and whipped cream? Be my guest. I gotta know what a five dollar shake tastes like. You can use my straw. I don't have cooties. Yeah, you can get shot for do. that. Cooties I can handle. That ain't good. Right. You got an immune system to them. Cootie queen. It's a pretty fucking good milkshake. Told you. <laughs> no, it was worth five dollars. It was pretty good. <laughs> I ain't never had one that good. <laughs> he took the straw like my dad because he calls them sissy sticks. I freaking love straws in my <laughs> in my drinks. Pay hey, what? Comfortable silences. That's when you know you found somebody really special. Comfortably share silence. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> the search continues, boys. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the bathroom and powder my nose. And you sit here and think of something to say. You know what that means? Powder my nose. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like too chill for the situation. That's what I thought it meant. <laughs> So that's where that term comes from. I'm learning lots from this movie. Don't you like if I did that, I wouldn't want to eat all that. Maybe we should have sat in Mount Monroe section. <laughs> Which one is two Monroe's? No, it's not. That is Mount Monroe. That is Mamie Van Dorn. And I don't see Jenny Manson. I wish I knew who that was. She have night off or something. Pretty smart. So do you think of something to say? You know how funny the world would look if it was like women who were in the restaurant? We all had to walk around looking like JFK and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the like I had to look like The Rock. <laughs> well, well, I do. What did you uh, think about what happened to Antoine? Who's Antoine? Tony Rocky Hart. <laughs> you know him. Fell out of a window. Hmm. Another way to say it would be that he was thrown out. <laughs> another way would be was he was thrown out by Marcellus. And yet even another way is to say he was thrown out of a window by Marcellus because of you. <laughs> Who told you? They. Don't be shy, Vincent. What else did they say? Did it involve the F word? No, 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 no. It, it always does. They they're giving you a foot massage. There you go, foot. Mm -hmm. You heard Marcellus through Tony Rocky Hard at a four-story window for giving me a foot massage? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? Well, I mean, at the time I was told it sounded reasonable. I know people been throwing Marcellus windows for less. Marcellus throwing Tony out of a four-story window for massaging my feet seem reasonable. Only thing Antoine ever touched in mine was my hand when he shook it at my wedding. Uh-oh. The truth is nobody knows why Marcellus threw Tony out of that four-story window except Marcellus and Tony. When you little scamps get together, you're worse than a sewing circle. <laughs> you almost be making stuff up. He's disappointed. He was trying to get his toes. So hey, is that a president? Supposed to be? Twist contest. Maybe Nixon. That's what I thought. We'll win this handsome trophy that Marilyn here is holding. <laughs> now, who will be our first contestants? Right here. <laughs> Want to dance? No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. Now I want to <laughs> dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. So dance good. All right. I'm here for our first contestant. Good thing he was like in a musical. Yeah, he was in Greece. He was like killing us. Now let's meet our first contestant. Definitely here. after. <laughs> young lady, what is your name? He's, wasn't he like young in Greece? This is Mia Wallace. And uh, how about your fella here? Who's the mm -hmm. All right, let's see what you can do. Take it away. Oh, she's right in the Oh, and space. she's going toeless. I mean, shoeless. Mm -hmm. Trying to make them think he's famous. <laughs> I guess so is he. <laughs> Are they about to win like this? Yeah, I definitely missed my era. I'd have been all right by then. <laughs> oh, the swim? Okay. I still do that a lot. These are iconic dance moves from like when I was younger. <laughs> he's got a stink face. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're like good. <laughs> I can't tell. I, can't I mean, tell. I think they're good, but no one. I mean, they're vibing. No black guys thought they were alright. So let's <laughs> not be doing too bad. <laughs> Did they win? Uh oh. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
They're like besties now. <laughs> yeah, I know, but what if her husband's there? Drinks, music. I'm gonna take a piss. That's a little bit more information than <laughs> I needed, Vince, but go right ahead. She seems so open. That's a cool player thing. <laughs> this girl's eccentric as hell, ain't she? Yeah. I mean, I think any of us would be if we did what she did in the bathroom. I don't know. Some of us might just go to sleep. <laughs> you like the blood vessel chart back there? I didn't even see it. The guy in the chair with all his blood vessels. Oh. Do it quickly. Say goodnight and go home. What do you got to do? Easy. She said. She's just, she's just vibing alone in the living room with that door open. You can maintain loyalty because being loyal is very important. <laughs> How are they not like asleep yet? Not everyone's 80 like us, babe. <laughs> oh, she gets hers from the same spot he does because the zip, the eyes. So out there you're gonna say good night i've had a very lovely evening oh wait that's his because that's his jacket the door get in the car go home jerk off and that's all you're gonna do <laughs> i don't think she should like sniff that why well, not because that's not what it is she looks like she'd sniff snuff out the couch <laughs> Oh, she OD'd on it, didn't she? Oh, he's screwed. Because she shouldn't have sniffed that, right? Right, She exactly. just shouldn't have. She should have, like, boiled it with a spoon. She her nose to herself. Dude, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're... Oh. Listen, I gotta go. He can't. Like, oh, he's the last known fuck. person. Come on, girl. We're getting out of here. We gotta walk now. That is not good. I know. All it was was a handshake that the guy got a speech impediment for. Don't f***ing die on me, Mia! Yeah, because you're gonna get thrown off a water tower. Hunt for stories. Answer. Look at the fruit brute. <laughs> He's eating and smoking at the same time. <laughs> Just pick one, bro. It's answer! <laughs> I give up, I'll marry you. <laughs> what? Yeah, I told him. <laughs> what is she doing? Hello, Lance! Vincent! I'm coming to your house. Whoa, whoa. Hold Don't get him involved. Man. What's the problem? I got this chick. She's no on me. Well, don't bring her here. Do not be bringing some <laughs> poop out to my house. No choice. Uh, are you talking to me on a cellular phone? I don't know you. Who is this? Don't come here. I'm hanging up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. <laughs> he doesn't want to get involved, boy. Heck no. Oh, he's there, too. They got right there. And, the shit. Oh. The and they ran into his house. <laughs> the car to my house. <laughs> He just the ground. Yeah. Look at well, all these people that are just seeing them right Great now. Spot. Now look, I am. I will be forced to tell him that you did not help. Come on, help me. Help me. Pick her up. Does he know Marcellus Wallace too? Is that why he's like, oh shoot, gotta do it? I guess so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all in it together. She's all dead. Get her out of here. Get her the the shot. shot. She's getting the shot. Like operation. Get my little like medical book. He needs a book to figure Hurry it out. Up, Lance, we're losing her. Look at oh yeah, then I can. Look, while I'm doing this, you take off her shirt and find her heart. And that'd be exact. Yeah, it's got to be exactly where a shot in the heart. Are you supposed to do it there? It. This is it? All right, what I need is a big, fat magic marker. Dang, look at that needle. Mm. You got it? What? A magic marker. <laughs> All, right. All right, tell me what to do. I think that just going to like go into okay. her bloodstream. Uh, uh, you're uh, giving her an injection of adrenaline mm -hmm. straight to her heart, but she's got a breastplate. So you got to pierce through that. So what you got to do is you got to <laughs> needle down in a stabbing motion. <laughs> look at the stone girl back there. I'm like her right now. All right, count to three. All right, ready? One. <laughs> Two. Don't miss. Three. I would. <laughs> Bro, set the bomb down. She she needed one after that. If you're all right, then say something. Something. Oh, that was trippy. She I like woke she up. was smiling the whole time. <laughs> she like woke up for that. <laughs> well, she's right back to the piece over there. Dude, what a rough night y'all had. They look like vampires. No more drugs, you guys. Stop it. Hmm. Hmm. Why is my head shaped like this? Hmm. Mia, 
What's your thoughts on? <laughs> Marcellus knew about this incident. I'd be in as much trouble as you. I seriously doubt that. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I can keep a secret if you can. Shake on it. She said, "Yeah, shake my toes." <laughs> Mom's the word. Mom's the word. Do you want to hear my Fox Force Five joke? Sure. Let's hear it. Except I think I'm still a little too petrified to laugh. This jump better be good. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato, and baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind, and Papa tomato gets really angry. Goes back and squishes him. Says ketchup. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like that one. Ketchup. See you around. That was all right. I mean, if our nine year old told us that, we'd love that. Yeah, he's nine. Dude, I'm just shocked about that. <laughs> you just stabbed her <laughs> like with an adrenaline shot. That daughter has been here forever. Much? One more thing for our type of cartoon. Much, stop watching TV a second. Yeah, we've got a special visitor. Do you remember when I told you your daddy died in a POW camp? This here is Captain Coons. This was a whole switch. What's going on? See, I was a good friend of your dad's. We were in that. Hanoi pit of hell together. If it had been me, who would not made it. Major Coolidge, you'd be talking right now to my son, Jim. The way it turned out, I'm talking to you. He's talking about Calvin Coolidge. Butch, I got something for you. This watch I got here. It was first purchased by your great-grandfather during the First World War. Oh, nearly him. Great-grandfather gave this watch to your granddad for good luck. Unfortunately, Dane's luck wasn't as good as his old man's. Dane was a Marine, and he was killed, along with all the other Marines at the Battle of Wake Island. Hmm. Three days later, your granddad was dead, but Wanaki kept his word. After the war was over, he paid a visit to your grandmother, delivering to your infant father his dad's gold watch. This watch. Now he's doing the same. This watch was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down on that Hanoi. You'd be damned if any slope's gonna put the greasy yellow hands on his boy's birthright, so he hid it. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. He died of dysentery. Give me the watch. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass two years. Then... That's seven years of... After seven years. Acid. <laughs> now, little man. Bro, I don't think I could wear it. <laughs> I would just be like, you know... I don't think I could do it, boys. <gasps> oh, it was him. I'm an idiot. Was I supposed to know it was him? So he's a fighter, kind of like his his lineage, huh? If I was him, I just wouldn't go to like war because you're having to give. Where is the watch? Hopefully up his ass. It's time, Butch. He needs it. Oh yeah, he's supposed to throw the fight. The in the fifth. He said fifth round, go down. Yeah, it's up there. Oh no. Wilson is dead. He said dead. That's what that's what he said. What happened? During the sad weeks ahead, the eyes of the WBA remain. He wasn't as lucky as his great granddad, huh? So he killed him and jumped out the window. A reliable cab driver. That's one thing about living in the country I appreciate. I ain't never had to jump out of a building into a trash can. Right. <laughs> oh, Nellyville. If Butch goes to Indochina, I want him hiding in a bowl of rice ready to pop a cap in his ass. <laughs> I will take care of it. That would be me. <laughs> yeah, because I'm in every bowl of rice, baby. Mister. Hey, she kind of sought him out, dude. I thought she knew him because, like, she was ready. She, he jumped out the window. They fight on the radio. You know the fighter? I will give you that idea. He's like, oh, come on. You're him. I know you're him. Tell me you're him. You see how sweaty I am? Of course I'm mm -hmm. him. You killed the other boxing man. Like with a punch? He's dead. The radio said he was dead. Sorry. And he fled. You are the first person I've ever met who has killed somebody. I'd be like, pull over, please. This is such a movie like background. Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like to kill a man? I'll tell you what, the only cigarette you got up there, I'll tell you all about it. Dang, she's there. She's at that good cab driver service. Tipper, tipper. And what is your name? Butch. Butch. What does it mean? I'm an American, honey. Your names don't mean shit. <laughs> I want to know what it feels like to kill a man. I couldn't tell you. I'd be like, what are the odds of hopping in her cab? I know, because, like, well, that's you know scary. You told me he was dead. Now that I know he's dead, you want to know how I feel about it? Well, me and Fabiana are going to leave in the morning. Yeah, it'll probably take us a couple days to get down to Knoxville. All right, Scotty. Next time I see you, we'll be on Tennessee time. Cool, brother. I don't you feel like he's going to get shot right, or something? Right, or something crazy. Because the way it was shot, like, it was like... Like the phone booth movie? <laughs> um... <laughs> 
Maybe you don't know nothing. That's why we're here, though. Is there explosives in the phone booth? Uh, basically, like a dude goes into a phone booth and someone's like, "Hey, what don't leave my booth, or I'm gonna shoot you." And he's like a hostage in a phone booth. <laughs> if anybody asks you who your fare was tonight, what are you gonna say? It's two, three, well dressed, slightly toasted Mexican. Oh, oh, hundred. The fellow little boss. Who has no checks? Butch. Why did he tell her all that information about himself, though? Wouldn't you lie about who you were? Just make some stuff up. Hard day at the office. Pretty hard. I feel like if that girl would have dropped me off, you'd have known about it. Like, she just don't even know. Can you make spoons? She didn't even go to his fight. Did you get everything? Yes, I did. Good job, sugar pop. Did everything go as planned? You didn't listen to the radio? I never listened to your fights. So she must have no idea about the mob boss and all that? I guess not. But he said, do you have everything ready? So maybe she does. Will you give me oral pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> you first. Okay. <sighs> Bro, why she have to ask like that? <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't like, yeah, if you put it in writing. Oh! You startled me. Did you have a bad dream? That's the TV on camera. <laughs> you, yeah, you, know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not sure the name. Are you in a way. She's in it. So She's reflecting off the glass. Of glass TV used to reflect. <laughs> What was it about? <laughs> well, how did she get small? <laughs> no, I'm busy. What was your dream about? Because the reflection is small. <laughs> like, damn. I remember. It's really rare that I remember my dream. Well, let's look at the grumpy man in the morning. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm going to have for breakfast? What, lemon pie? I'm going to order a big plate of blueberry pancakes with maple syrup. Mm. Where's my watch? Uh oh. It's there. Have you looked? Dang. You sure you got it? Yes, bedside table drawer. And the little kangaroo? Yes, it was on your little kangaroo. Yeah, well, not here now. Well, it should be. Yes, it most oh, she's so upset. Should be. It's I know. here now. So where the f is it? I mean, it was my father's watch. Do you have any idea what he had to go through to get me that watch? Well, you should have kept it up your I ass. I time to go into it, but he went through a lot. I'm always going to see you set on fire, but I specifically reminded you not to forget the watch now think did you get i just it? wouldn't want to touch it if i was her <laughs> i believe so you believe so what the f does that mean you either did or you didn't get it then i did are you sure obviously not bro what <laughs> no they were good until the watch man it's not your fault didn't illustrate how personal the watch was to me it's very rational mm -hmm. and creepy that you're talking through your anger problems to yourself mm -hmm. i'm sorry don't be why does it mean that? So I gotta go back to my apartment and get my watch. Man, it really means a lot then. Won't the gangsters be looking for you there? That's what I'm gonna find out. If they are, I don't think I can handle it. I'm gonna split. I saw your watch. I thought I brought it. I'm so sorry. Oh, It's probably there. Here's some money. Go out and get those pancakes. Have a nice breakfast. What do you think about his jacket? I'll be back before you Heart. can say blueberry pie. Blueberry pie. Shit of all the things she could forget she forgets my father's watch I specifically reminded her bedside table on the kangaroo said the words don't forget my father's watch if it's so important why didn't you pack it yourself though right this movie's got plot holes didn't he have a a duffel bag he threw it into the trash can or like put it in your pocket i'm not gonna make another ain't no insertion joke but mm -hmm. geez dude buy shirts with front pockets <laughs> don't you feel like something crazy is gonna happen because the way this is filmed right now it like it's just intense, yeah. falling behind him like this yeah like something's gotta give right what if he gets shot oh yeah he's supposed to be like hiding i forgot mm -hmm. about that yeah the gangsters are out looking for him oh he lives in the villas huh <laughs> Why'd you do all that for that? I don't know. Right, like he was so quiet and he just busts <laughs> in, like for what? Oh my gosh. And that's on his wrist. People could be walking around on, with that on their wrist. Okay, well, even better. I didn't realize he fixed it to bump the whole front pocket t shirt. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. Mm, cinnamon. That's like the brown sugar Pop Tarts. Mm. Yummy. Oh, you put them in the freaking microwave or the toaster. <gasps> oh, the piece. <laughs> yeah, somebody was about to assassinate you, homie. With a big silencer on it, I see. Oh! No, 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 no don't shoot him! It's Vincent! He's cool! He's cool! Why is he using the restroom in his house, though? Mmm. <laughs> Man, I hate to say it, but that's kind of what you get. 
What? Sounds of the Shadow Realm. Man. Why did he leave his gun right there? Because I guess he was just in the restroom. Maybe he saw the coast was clear. Bro, I'm sitting on the toilet like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> why, would you, why would you even why use would you the Why would you shut the door? Why would you even use the bathroom at their house? <laughs> I know. You're about to kill like, that what, man. Are you, what are you doing? What if you had to use the bathroom? That guy's used the bathroom like three times or two times or something. Bro, you better do better than that. My thing is, why are you shutting the door? That reminds me of like you, that show. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. I was like, how? No, the show <laughs> you, he like lives somewhere like that for a minute. Yeah, that show's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody in this movie is just a straight killer, huh? <laughs> that guy's got two bodies right now. Yeah, but the first one, don't they sign a contract where he can't get in trouble for it? Well, he did, actually. So. But it ain't about getting in trouble. It's about, like, have some decency. Try not to kill your opponent. Keep on the rest of it. Just trying to sing so you're not stressed. He is not stressed. He ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> Yo, that's the dude. Oh, that's the dude the right there. The bandaid. <laughs> oh. 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 So that's Marcellus. Welcome back to the land of the living, my friend. Oh, I love her coat. Court, I will be glad to help. Okay, that guy was a drunken maniac. He hit you, and then he crashed into that car. Okay, Susan. Chill. <laughs> Him. This is girl hour dead. out here. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell him because he was just gonna let him sit in front of him. Wow. <laughs> Why did you shoot her? He's so disoriented. Oh my gosh. Can I help you with something? He did not deserve that. Wait a goddamn minute now. Come here, my. You feel that sting, big boy, huh? Huh? Hold it right there, goddammit. This ain't none of your business, mister. I'm making it my business. It's his business. Toss the weapon. You don't understand, man. Toss the weapon. He had two different colored eyes. Hmm. <coughs> the shotgun slap. It's another day of Big Troy's radios and guitar equipment. <laughs> like it says killed back there. Yeah. Zed. I mean, yeah, the spider just killed a couple of flies. <laughs> the spider. There's people like that though, man. They're just waiting on you to do some dumb stuff. So they can catch you? Some dudes who hang out at the gas stations too much. Oh, no. Playing slots. Oh, no. They're tied up. Yo, they got ball gags in their mouth. You know, the things you like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys, for real. What, why are they there? I thought that was just a good old boy keeping law in order. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm shocked. He said the spider caught some flies. Wait, you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking, right? Nobody He's going to torture him? Place of business no. <laughs> they got ball gags in their mouth. Yeah, but maybe that's like the only thing he could buy to like fit in their mouth. No, nah, they actually mark those up. People pay a pretty penny for those that are into it. Well, if I'm so into it, why don't I know that? <laughs> he's going to shoot that one. Is that right? You going to shoot him? Oh, it's a cop? Huh? Hey, Grace, right out front. Right it out is front. law and order. Bring out the gimp. Bro, he played in Jim Carrey, The Mask. I guess you just have to go wake him up now, won't you? Who's the bad guy in it? Oh. Yeah. What? This is wild. What is happening? <laughs> this movie took two left turns, stayed straight for a little bit, broke down, asked for directions, took off. The gimp. Yeah, they said get, he's asleep. Go wake him up. Which one of you want to do first? I ain't for sure yet. Amy? This is turning weird, I think. <laughs> but he did not expect that to happen today. So they just like capture criminals and do stuff to them? Why does he have to wear a studded tuxedo though? You keep an eye on this one. So that's not a real cop? I think the problem is that is a real cop. Oh. I think he parts his squad car, just goes down it. to the basement, oh. and just goes off. 
He's a... <clears throat> Hopefully this is the fiction part of the Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I don't know. Me and my dad gotta have a talk. <laughs> what the hell? I gotta have a talk with my dad, too, because he had this movie. Ronald. Boxer shrink. Yeah, get out of there. Ugh, dude, I'd be growing up. Ain't no telling where that ball's been. Oh, I would feel kind of bad leaving that dude, though. You better get... Hell no. I know he was trying to kill you, but gross. Like... Yeah, that was like a whole cop, too. You can't... Man, you better get out of there. Is he about to go help him? Oh, no. I didn't really mean it. Hey, you know what? That might be good. If you help him, that might get him off your back. Cause... Right, he might be cool with you now. Man, that was happening to me. Right. <laughs> right, but you're taking forever. <laughs> like, why are you taking so long? He's Hurry like, up. well, at least let one of them have a good time. Oh. Is that a gas powered one? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he expects. Now he's just damn fulfilling fantasies out there. It'd be my luck that thing's not sharp, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, gosh, I don't want to see. Life. That's it. Are oh, they murdering buddies now? Oh. Dang, Marcellus. Like, I can't even be mad at you for that one. Yeah, I'm Team Marcellus on this one, bro. <laughs> I got you. No, man. <laughs> he said, no. Oh. I'm not okay. I'm pretty far from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. He did not like that, did he? I didn't want now between me and you. Oh, that wasn't now. I tell you what now between me and you. There is no me and you. Not no more. So we cool? That's what he got out of that? I know. Yeah, we cool. Oh. Two things. Don't tell nobody about this. Never. Two. You leave town tonight, right now. Already working on it. Gone, you stay gone, or you be gone. Amen. You lost all your L.A. privileges. Deal? Deal. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> I don't even know if I'd have took that part if I was him. <laughs> you know, that's kind of... And that could be anybody. Let's not go to pawn shops no more. Mm -mm, not, I don't want to know what's under them no more. Oh yeah, take his chopper. What's up? It says Grace on it. <laughs> Come on, baby, you gotta go right now. Where did you get this motorcycle? It's not a motorcycle, baby. It's a chopper. Come on, <laughs> let's go. What happened to my Honda? I'm sorry, baby. I had to crash that Honda. Will you come on now, please? <laughs> come on, let's go. So many questions. She, I mean, she has the right to ask these questions, but geez, y'all gotta go. He just blows her off like that guy no, from uh, I, I might have broken my No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Come here, come here. I'm sorry. <laughs> so long I started to think dreadful thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry. I it love was worse pancakes. than you thought, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> so much worse. The blueberry pancakes. I didn't have blueberry pancakes. I had to get better milk. Oh, I'm sure no. you're okay. <laughs> Honey, since I left you, this, this has been without a doubt the single weirdest <laughs> Like, come on, hop on. I'll tell you all about it. Come on, get on. <laughs> Please don't tell her. What motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? <laughs> Zed's dead, baby. <laughs> Zed's, Zed's dead. dead. <laughs> the money situation. Yes, you did, Brett. You tried to f***ing Marcellus Wallace. Don't want to be f***ed by anybody. Oh, we're back here. <laughs> you read the Bible, Brett. Yes! Well, there's this passage I got memorized. It sort of fits the vacation. Ezekiel 25, 17. Oh, no. <laughs> and you will know my name is the Lord. When I lay my vengeance upon thee. Getting on my nerves. Marvin. Marvin! <laughs> ah, you mother... Oh, Look how close he was to hitting him. That's talent, brother. Yeah, how do you suck that bad? I know, he looks like Jerry Seinfeld, though. Did you forget that someone was in there with a goddamn hand cannon? <laughs> See the size of that gun he fired at us? It was bigger than him. Oh, my gosh. Dead, man. There's bullet holes behind him. We was lucky. No, 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 no. That shit wasn't luck. This was divine intervention. You know what divine intervention is? Is he serious right now? Did that go through him or am I tripping? Uh, God came down from heaven and stopped these motherfucking bullets. <laughs> I think it's time for us to leave, Jules. Don't do that. Don't <laughs> blow this shit off. What just happened here was a miracle. All right, it was a miracle. They didn't even shoot the other guy yet, right? Are we going now? Right. But I would be shocked too. I'd be like, what? It's behind me. Hey, come on. 
Marvin, what do you make of all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped the oh! Oh, Dang! Yeah. What did Marvin do? Oh, man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the f did you do that? Well, I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Chill out, man. I told you it was an accident. I think he did that on purpose. Hey, something. the car ain't hit no mother. <laughs> hey, look, man. I didn't. I didn't mean to shoot the son of a. <laughs> gun went off. I don't know why. We're on a city street in broad daylight. I can't here. Believe it, man. We'll believe it now, mother. I can't believe it, man. <laughs> Take it to a friendly place. That's all. This is the valley, Vincent. My son ain't got no friendly place. What you in the say valley? My town, man. What you doing? I'm calling my partner in Toluca Lake. Where's Toluca Lake? It's just over the hill here, over by Burbank <laughs> Studio. Go? Jimmy, yo, how you doing, man? It's Jewel. In the car, we gotta get off the road pronto. I need to use your garage for a couple hours. I probably wouldn't have answered if he called me. You kind of freaked out back there on you some morning. Well, put yourself in his position. I mean, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. He just woke up. He wasn't expecting this shit. <laughs> we gotta remember here who's doing who. Favorite. Look at the difference in them. He's like folding it up and he's just being... Taste That's the director, right? right? Did you notice a sign on the front of my house that said dead for storage? Jimmy, you know I ain't seen no shit. Did you notice a sign in the front of my house that said dead storage? No, I didn't. You know why you didn't see that sign? Why? Because it ain't there, because storing dead ain't my f***ing business. That's why. Well, Jimmy, we're not going <laughs> to store them. Don't you f***ing realize, man, that if Bonnie comes home and finds a dead body in her house, I'm going to get divorced? Isn't he wearing like a World Peace shirt? <laughs> I don't want to get divorced. <laughs> She comes home from work in about an hour and a half. Graveyard shift at the hospital. You gotta make some phone calls. You gotta call some people. All I wanna do is call my people, get them bring us in. That's all. Do me that favor, all right? The phone is in my bedroom. I suggest you get going. Well, say she comes home. What do you think she'll do? You ain't got no problem, Jules. Oh, there's her. I'm on the mother. Wait for the wolf who should be coming directly. You send in the wolf? You feel better, mother. That's all you had to say. <laughs> Jules. Mm -hmm. Then sent to Bonnie. It's 30 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. Who is this? <laughs> he made it right on time, dude. A little earlier. You're Jimmy, right? This is your house? Sure is. I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems. He said, hi, I'm a guy that solves problems. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh-huh. Do me a favor, will you? Don't let's some coffee back there. Would you make me a cup? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, uh, um, how do you uh, take it? Lots of cream, lots of sugar. The only way. What you two folks to do is take those cleaning products and clean the inside of the car. What you need to take care of are the really messy parts. The pools of blood that I've collected, you gotta soak that shit. He up. had to be here for that? Jimmy, for them to know that? I need blankets, I need comforters, I need quilts, I need bedspreads. We need to camouflage the interior of the car. We're gonna line the front seat and the back seat and the floorboards with quilts and blankets. Yeah, why do they have to get involved so with him at all? If the starts sticking his big snout in the car, the subterfuge won't last. Boys, get to work. Please, it would be nice. I'm here to help. If my help's not appreciated, lots of luck, gentlemen. No, 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 Mr. Wolf, it ain't like that. Your help is definitely Mr. appreciated. Wolf. All he yeah. did was tell them what they should already be doing. <laughs> okay, I respect you. I just don't like people barking orders at me, that's all. Jeez, bro. Because time is a factor. I if think you're fast, smart I enough not to do that yourself, I need you guys to act fast if you want to get out of this. So, pretty please, with sugar on top, clean the car. How about you, Jimmy? You in Oak Man? Oak's nice. <laughs> How did he ever get involved in this? He's so nice. <laughs> Down to earth. Oh, they only have 40 man. minutes. I, I thought this never, guy was going to dispose of the car or something. Some like, have some good Jules, idea. Did you ever hear the philosophy that once a man yeah, admits right. that he is wrong, <laughs> he's immediately forgiven? For it's like all checkouts these days. They just stand there. You do everything. <laughs> what the f*** am I doing in the back? You the mother should be on brain detail. <laughs> I'm washing the windows and you picking up this door. Fine job, gentlemen. <laughs> Phase one is complete, clean the car, which moves us right along to phase two. Clean you two. Quickly, gentlemen. We've got about 15 minutes before Jimmy's better half comes pulling into the driveway. No Damn, sense of urgency. Out. Like, no sense of urgency. What is he going to okay, do? Hose him down? Out of toss it. County before, I'm sure. Got oh. Damn, what a f***ing cold. Yo, yo, you yo, yo. me, gentlemen. Come on, come on, do it. God damn it, do it. Uh, uh. Bro, that was so fast. <laughs> How'd y'all get all that blood off? You're dry enough. Toss them their clothes. <laughs> you guys look like what do they look like jimmy dorks <laughs> <laughs> they look like a couple of dorks <laughs> ha 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 your clothes mother come on gentlemen <laughs> we're laughing our way right into prison 
What's with the outfits? You guys going to a volleyball game or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my lady out for breakfast. Maybe I can drop you two off. Where do you live? Redondo? Inglewood. It's, it's your future. I, I see a, a cab ride. I'm Move out of the sticks, fellas. Mr. Wolf, I just want to tell you it was a real pleasure watching you work. Yeah, I really am. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. Call me Winston. Was he supposed to not do that, that much? <laughs> respect for one's elders shows character. I have character. Of course, you are a character. Doesn't mean that you have character. <laughs> that was such a... <laughs> this movie, man. Want to share a cab? Go for some breakfast. Feel like having breakfast with me? These are some early risers in this movie. I know, movie, they're yeah. talking about blueberry pancakes. This whole movie is basically taking place during in the morning, hasn't it? Yeah, man, he's about as European as English Bob. I know that right. now. Are they in the What's same cool diner? Thank you. Ain't that where they were sitting in that booth right there? It they're looked looking like out it, the yeah, window. It looked yeah. like it. Want some bacon? No, man, I don't eat pork. Are you Jewish? No, I ain't Jewish. I just don't dig on swine, that's all. Why not? You don't dig on swine. Pigs are filthy animals. I don't eat filthy animals. Pigs sleep and root and shit. That's a filthy animal. How about a dog? Dog eats his own feces. I don't eat dog either. <laughs> Do you consider a dog to be a filthy animal? I wouldn't go so far as to call a dog filthy, but they're definitely dirty. I feel like they're all my homies now at this point. <laughs> We've had so many conversations about <laughs> randomness. You're not starting to lighten up. We've been sitting there all serious. Just been sitting here thinking. <laughs> about what? About the miracle we witnessed. <laughs> you witnessed. I witnessed a freak occurrence. You serious? You really thinking about quitting? The life? Yeah. Most definitely. Fuck. What you gonna do then? Well, that's what I've been sitting here contemplating. First, I'm going to deliver this case to Marcellus. Basically, we never saw it was in it. Walk. No, but it blew gold in his face. You know, like Kane in Kung Fu. Maybe walk it was Jamie Lannister's place, hand. Meet people, get in adventures. So you decided to be a bump. I'll just be Jules, Vincent. No more, no less. No Jules, you decided to be a bump. Look, my friend, this is just where you and I differ. Garson! Oh. That's them right there. Coffee! Yep. To be continued. His shirt says banana slugs. Like, what the heck? <laughs> it's a banana slug. He's a straight killer with it on. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! He's a white guy. Get the what does Winker mean, you guys? He <laughs> just like, get winks off too much. Oh. The manager here, there's no problem. No problem at You gonna give me a problem? God damn. Listen, everybody, be calm, cooperate. And this will all be over in a minute. If you're Fuck robbing out. something, don't you want to be well calm done. so things will go right? When you're being chaotic, there's too many variables that could happen. All right, now, people! Gonna come around and collect your wallets! Just throw them in a bag! Are we clear? <laughs> bag. It's in the case. My boss is dirty laundry. I hate to shatter your ego, but this ain't the first time I've had a gun pointed at me. You don't take your f***ing hand off that case, it'll be your last. Stop causing problems! You'll get us all killed! Give them what you got and get them out of here! Shut the f*** up, fat man! This ain't none of your goddamn business. <laughs> be cool, honey bunny. Be cool. No problem. I got it under control. Now, I'm gonna count to three. If you don't open that case, I'm gonna unload in your f***ing face. Three. Okay, Ringo. You win. It's yours. I thought he was gonna kill him because his partner was alone when right. he got shot. Opening. Bruh, show us. Wait, what is Does he have two different colored eyes too? You let him go! You let him go! Let go of it! Tell that to be cool! Say, be cool! Say, be cool! Tell that to chill! Be cool! Chill that out! Tell her to chill! Just chill out, honey bunny! Alright, now tell me your name. Yolanda. We're all gonna be like three little Fonzies here. And what's Fonzie like? Come on, Yolanda, what's Fonzie like? Cool. What? John Travolta's the Fonz. Samunda. Or something, I don't know, maybe. And he that's what we're gonna be. We're gonna be cool. Okay, now you let him go. Yolanda, I thought you were gonna be cool. Now, when you yell at me, it makes me nervous. And when I get nervous, I get scared. And when mother <laughs> get scared, that's when mother <laughs> accidentally get shot. <laughs> Normally, both your asses would be dead as fried chicken but you happen to pull this shit while i'm in a transitional period and i don't want to kill you <laughs> i want to help you but i can't give you this case because it don't belong to me besides i've been through too much with this case this morning to just hand it over to your dumb ass <laughs> Vincent, <laughs> what cool. is in that case <laughs> yolanda it's cool baby it's cool we still just talking come on point the gun at me point the gun at me there you go <laughs> hey, Vincent. now i want you to go in that bag find my wallet what is it? It's the one that says bad mother. <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson's awesome in this. I know. So funny. I'm never gonna think of freaking Nick Fury the same though. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Open it up. Take out the money. Count it. The other people, I feel so bad for them. 
How much is that? About fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, put it in your pocket. It's yours. Now with the rest of those wallets in the register. Jules, you give that f***ing Nimrod fifteen hundred dollars, and I'll shoot him on general principle. No, Yolanda, Yolanda, he ain't gonna do a god mother thing. Vince, <laughs> shut the <laughs> <up>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Yolanda. Stay with me, baby. Now, I ain't giving it to him, Vincent. I'm buying something for my money. You want to know what I'm buying, Ringo? What? Your life. I'm giving you that money so I don't have to kill your ass. You read the Bible, Ringo? Oh, no. Is no, he cool? Well, there's this passage I got memorized. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and good is he gonna shoot him in the face? The week through the valley of darkness. I've been saying that for years. And if you heard it, that meant your ass. I never gave much thought to what it meant. I just thought it was some cold-blooded shit. To say to him <laughs> or I popped a cap in his ass. <laughs> the truth is, you're the weak, and I'm the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. Imagine running into him, bro. You go to rob a little restaurant, and that guy does you like that in front of your wife. Go. They did that the whole time <laughs> that that was going on. I think we should be leaving now. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Gave him that mercy, though, didn't he? They look like such surfers for some reason. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that was Pulp Fiction, babe. On a scale from one to ten, what do you rate this movie? Well, I loved it. It was it was a lot of fun. It just I, I think it would be one I have to watch maybe another time to fully understand. Because, all the like, cussing and the violence and all that. I'm sure you didn't love that part. <laughs> let's be real. I didn't. I mean, I didn't love that part, but I loved the movie. It was like a good time. Like, I know I a lot of you people out there are gonna be like, "Oh, you're forcing her." Opinion. No, dude, not at all. I know her a lot more, so just trust me. <laughs> well, even though it did cuss a lot and stuff, and like you know, sometimes that's not my favoriteest thing. I don't know. Since I got older, it kind of like when I hear that, it's like burns holes through my ears sometimes. But <laughs> I had a good time in this one. I think just like the comic relief of some of it. Was Samuel L. Jackson was yeah, so funny in this, man. Like, in this. I'm going to let him have it. That was the coolest <laughs> performance I think I've ever yeah. seen in my life. And I will never look at Nick Fury the same Right. At I thought all. John Travolta was a good time in this one, too. <laughs> I really liked he his was, yeah, I he liked was the like character. I liked the character of Vince a lot, right? yeah. yeah. Well, he was like kind of just like a... He was a hitman, but like a... like I don't want to say stupid, but he wasn't one the brightest. Was, right, right. Yeah, so he was like a... He was like a goofy hitman. Like, I don't know. And he definitely did not ish where he eats, bro. So he <laughs> kept his business away from his house. That's for sure. And away from that wife of his. You know, I thought it was really funny in this movie because I got a kick out of that scene. Because I know somebody who do dead serious, bro. Like, I don't know anyone in my whole entire existence who looked more similar to someone than those two people looked like to me. Right. Like I said in the movie. And um, so it was really funny hearing them talk because they do not talk the same at all. Oh, they don't. <laughs> I mean, they both talk kind of funny, but um, anyways, man, so that was really a trip. And like I said, Samuel L. was just so funny in this. I feel like he was. I wish I would have seen this before we went on our Marvel journey. Yeah. Because I'd have been like, I'd have been like, you better Hulk smash a mother. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, what, Hulk, so when everyone like watches that, they already know that Nick. Go ahead. Oh, God. Who knows how long that was on there? But anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wonder any anyone who's watches like Marvel now, they've seen that before probably, and they probably just like think of him so differently than well, we did. Well, see, I knew that Samuel L. had a um, reputation for cussing a lot. Oh, I didn't. Right. Well, because the snakes on the plane thing is another one. I like, heard the of biggest one. I heard of a snake on a plane, but I've never like seen anyone with that. I've never seen anything about it. I've heard of the snakes on the plane. Uh, now that I've watched it, I 100% can confirm my belief. That Samuel L. has a potty mouth, man, for <laughs> sure. So, but he was the Jules character, in my opinion, was funny because the best character, to yeah, hundred percent, loved it. But had like the best redemption arc in it because I felt like I felt like w every character was supposed to have a redemption arc. Maybe. Oh, so you're trying to get past the praise? You're trying to dive into the meaning? Oh, of that. okay, I see, I see. Oh, I good what transition. Do you call, I like that. What do you call it? A you segue. Oh, I segued. <laughs> I feel like I segued. Good job. Yeah. So basically great redemption arc every person had one though in their own weird way but when they like got because the well, not everyone had one the well dude no who got shot didn't have one. well no that no he didn't but you know what i'm saying like because i felt like they killed off john travolta and then like brought him like they brought him back by like the weird timeline that they have going on i don't know so when samuel l was doing all that nice that 
that Ezekiel stuff, and then he took it all back at the end. Like, Don Travolta was there for that. That was weird. Well, I see, don't know. That was confusing to me. The main character, Samuel L. Um, Jules. Jules. Basically, at the end, he had a decision to make. Was he going to continue the lifestyle? See, it's a, it's a movie where they see... Well, let's start in the beginning. The movie starts out... And you get the, the diner, yeah. cold opening, and they're crazy. And not only are they robbing the place, they're making a scene about it. So automatically, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, insane. These guys are crazy. It's probably what it's going to be about. I thought they were cops. Right. Okay, so I thought that they were going to investigate these people, whatever. And then it turns out, man, it goes a lot deeper. And you meet all these characters that are so basically unrelatable. In a right. Way, because they're, like, yeah. just crazy killers. Yeah. But you actually end up kind of becoming friends with them, in a sense. And... You sort of see all these three different stories play out. And basically, man, at the end of the day in the diner, he chose, Jules chose to allow the man to live and turn over a new leaf. And he basically found God, found meaning, mm. moved away from like his nihilistic All because of those bullets, right? Those well, he, bullets he missed thought, him. He thought that like God gave him another chance yeah. at life. So he kind of didn't have it in him to do it. The other guy, on the other hand, he walked out that diner at the end of the movie and he didn't got, make got that killed. choice. And that's yeah. Not, and so the movie definitely played with the timeline in it. I mm. really like that part of the movie. I think the story itself being told, don't take it the wrong way. Maybe the story in itself wasn't that great because if you would have told it literally, it just would have been an, you know, just a story told for the thousandth time. But the way that they portrayed it and mixed it up and showed you different people in impossible situations and even like the drug use and the party and all that stuff man. that's what i was saying though like, like just what you said like you said it was told in a weird way but so it felt like they because they killed off john travolta but then they bring him back so that was like well they didn't bring was, him back it was just they brought him back in the other guy's story and he like got redemption in that way it was weird i don't know how to explain it It was like the story just jumped the basic basically it seemed like the story started out they were they had all those dudes held up in a room and then you go and then you move on to a different part of a story that happens and it all finds a i mean you get you get the i mean obviously yeah. you know what happened but it was yeah it was, i was trying to work it out in my own mind guys on youtube man i could be like yeah man this guy's blue and then there's gonna be someone who's like why are you saying it's red you know that's just how that's just how it is so i know if i said that it would definitely get misconstrued awesome movie brilliant movie but i think the movie was about basically the man just lived in a place where everything was terrible and he just decided to get out man and he just made a choice and it, i guess ultimately it saved his life i'm really confused i don't know if the bullets really went through him or if that was right. just you know him looking for meaning in things you know because uh, there's always the two trains of thought and but i thought it was a really good story actually i thought they told it in a really weird way and i feel like it was this so movie, interesting did this movie push boundaries or something because this well, was out there it was in 94 which we were two so, I don't know mm -hmm. what movies were like in 94. Yeah, I just me don't know either. Movies. I mean, we, was it Shawshank that came out in 94 as well? Yeah, but that movie like felt classy. It felt yeah, like... it had a it had a certain degree of class to it, if that right, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. But um just yeah. like uh the yeah. one we just watched, The Green Mile. That was 99 though. But I mean, you know, five years changes a lot. I don't know, but yeah, everything seemed to have a certain like Forrest Gump, for example. I don't know when that came out. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I just feel like there is like a, I don't know. I feel like if everyone said MF and Forrest Gump, I'd be like, Ugh. well, because when I think of the fifties, people didn't talk like that in movies. Right. And then in the sixties, maybe they started to, right? You know. And the next thing you know, man, in a couple of years, we like mother, mother, mother. Right. But uh, what I did notice though, for it to be so like violent, so to say, there wasn't a lot of like gore. gore. Yeah. yeah. When they did the slice, I was expecting like a Game of Thrones like. I was like, oh, I'm bracing myself for it. And then I was like, like the that man got nicked. Just falling out. You know? Yeah, that man got nicked. They took <laughs> some ketchup and squirted it down his right. shirt. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, right. Because he, they, they sort of made that katana scene seem like it was about to be uh, Like I was about to be like slice and dice, baby, you mm -hmm. know, Wolverine style. But no, it didn't even come like that. But uh, I guess they moved boundaries. They didn't just absolutely tear the freaking dam down and allow the flood. Right, maybe yeah. they pushed them in like terms of doing drugs on screen or something like that because there was quite a bit of that, which you know I didn't know the difference between heroin and cocaine till this movie. So great for and me. Let, <laughs> and I don't know if it's just like a Tarantino thing. I don't know. Did the movie seem like it was portrayed to take place in '94? That's something I totally forgot to even look for. Did it seem like it took place earlier? I couldn't really tell because they had on suits the whole time. 
Hmm. I don't really pay attention to the cars. I don't know. Anyways, man, what was up with the excessive amount of smoking? Like, I understand it's the times and all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I remember, honestly, man. So, like, my grandma lives in Jackson, Georgia, and if you go like five minutes past that, like, people still to this day smoking gas stations and stuff. Right? So, yeah. Um. Yeah. Probably was that, not legally. Is that something that's just like prevalent in Tarantino films, or did that just help? No, to- in the '90s, people used to like smoke on planes and stuff. Like, you could smoke anywhere. I actually remember when I was younger, there was this thing called, like, Blue Laws or something. And you would have to, we were voting on if you could smoke in restaurants or not, even. Right. So, people smoke all the time, everywhere. I'm I'm all for people's freedoms, right? Everyone should be able to smoke. Have at it, man. 100%. Dude, matter of fact, smoke more. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Smoke all you can, you know? But, (laughs) you know, I have a right to go in a restaurant without having to, like, deal with that. So, um definitely definitely got that one right it was just it was just wild maybe they was just using it as a sense to show like empowerment you know i know like smoking used to be like female empowerment a lot like women used to do that to show oh yeah it was like in ads and stuff like back in the day because right, like yeah. businessmen and men of class would smoke and so women would do it to show like equality and stuff like right. that so um i don't know there was a lot of cigarettes and there was even like a lot of like ha- handmade in the restaurant cigarettes which if that was a thing that's really strange to me are you talking about just like rolling them yeah bro, like, people do that but i know but in public like you do I that knew, bro i knew like remember i told you about that guy who got mad and he's like i was like man why are you so upset it's this old guy this old hippie guy with long hair back with that like forrest gump he's like man i'm sad because terrence said i wasn't worth 22 dollars an hour I was like, well, you ain't, bro. Like, to pour concrete, you ain't worth 22 an hour. <laughs> what are you talking about? Anyways, and he was upset. And he, uh, remember, I told you that story before, but that man, what was he talking about? I told him. <laughs> what was the subject? <laughs> I, I, Rolling I got, your own cigarettes? He used to do that. This man had, like, a damn press machine okay, and everything. Okay, but no, listen, if I'm in public and... I used to be like... But if you're in the 90s, okay, you're in the 90s, you're in public, right? And you're just gonna roll a cigarette right nah, there. Does that like does that happen, you guys? I just need to know. Did y'all do that? I, People did that. Oh, well, I didn't do that in the '90s. I was maybe I was two, but I didn't do it. I mean, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> I don't know what the heck you were doing in the '90s, throwing up a lot. Yeah, probably peeing my pants or something. But um, one thing I did notice in this movie, we're about to start talking about the movie again. Yeah, I'm, I'm back on. I'm back on the movie. I'm say seg- I'm segueing. Okay, guys. So the briefcase. What was in it? I don't know. <laughs> like, it was something gold. Bro, it could have been anything. Man. It was absolutely amazing. Apparently, it could have been an undiscovered element from like a different solar system. Right. That's highly maybe valuable. Maybe it's here. I don't maybe know. Quentin Tarantino has his own version of some type of metal, like vibranium, yeah, yeah, yeah. adamantium. What and, do you think? I mean, and you dragon know the, glass. You know the guy who they was holding it for. What do you think it was? You know him. I don't know. Maybe. Nah, that's too much. Never mind. Can't say that on YouTube. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't say it. Well, and then something else that I wanted to point out that I noticed when we were watching. Of course, like we read the beginning. We sat there and read it because, you know, it was a struggle. It was like the same thing, but two different meanings, which, you know, when we the were watching Arrival, I picked up on that hard because like or and even in Game of Thrones, even where they said, you know, you can interpret one word. and It means other things. Well, yeah, in this movie, they made a big deal about that. Like, I can give you an example, the Big Mac or I mean, the quarter pounder. Like they were just saying same things with different meanings, which I'm not sure what that even had to do with the story. And then they made the comment about like, what's your name mean? He's like, I'm American. Maybe it's I don't just mean because she. I think well, in movies are so much symbolism and symbolic stuff. I think it's just saying that like they're searching for meaning. I think but, that's like, the whole point. It's a motor. She's like, "What's that chopper? It's a motorcycle, baby, or whatever." Opposite, you know she, that that weird stuff like that was constant throughout the movie. Maybe it's just the movie's way of like really applying meaning to things in a world that seems so chaotic and meaningless. Right. Right. Like a motorcycle is a motorcycle, but in the mind, a motorcycle is a complete different experience than a chopper. Like a <laughs> chopper brings a whole different. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're wearing the assless chaps if you're riding a chopper. Like the chances of you having a couple of eight balls in your pocket is a lot higher if you're on a chopper. But if you're on a motorcycle, it could be a little different vibe. I mean, if you're on a motorcycle, you, you might be, be taking riding the countryside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Your countryside. laughs> Absolutely. Oh, so okay. Well, it's, I w- it's not even like a tomato tomato thing. It's like it's like you, you see something and it means something completely different to right. you than someone. Okay, I like that. I don't even know if that means anything. I, exactly. How was it relevant? But but that's what I'm saying. How was it relevant in the movie? The only way I can really think is like through that Bible verse when he was like, to me, it just sounded like something hard to say. 
before I kill somebody. Okay. Guys, let's talk about it. First of all, don't send your wife out with other dudes <laughs> to have a good time. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how entertaining the man is. Actually, the more entertaining, probably you're worse. You're worse off. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any personal experience. I just have a brain. Don't do that. And if you have the type of girl who's really into foot massages, send her to a certified professional. <laughs> don't let don't let people give her foot massages. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, foot massage is definitely a gateway. All you got to do is, is it okay if you're a significant other? Give someone a foot massage. Probably not. So that answers that question. This movie was very philosophical in that sense. <laughs> and I thought it was wild how this man went out with her. Appeared to have a really good time with her. I felt like they were on the same wavelength. They were both just sort of wild. Right. But you know what I noticed about her? She was like, re she was like all wild there. But then when she gets hit with that adrenaline shot, then like. She it, was calm. Yeah. And then she was like wanting to tell that joke. But at the beginning, she was like, no, nah, I can't tell you it. Like, well, and then the adrenaline nowhere. got her heart back to default. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. So maybe so, she was just coming off of it. Maybe the <laughs> adrenaline like blew the, blew the drug effect. <laughs> blew right. It I guess, I guess everything was all good and well with her. We'll never know. <laughs> right. And then we'll your personal know. favorite part of the movie uh, was the pawn shop scene. Oh, so. Love that part. It was I'm Fantastic. never going to look at pawn shops the same. No. Genuinely. I'm going to literally think there's a basement under there. So you guys know, uh, well, how long ago was it when we moved? About six months ago? So at this point, a lot of you guys probably know if you've been on the channel for about six months, but we moved about six months ago, right? I've been like, babe, we got we to gotta check these pawn shops out because instead of paying $329 for a ladder, I can go to a pawn shop and get it for like 60 <laughs> bucks, right? So uh, I've been trying to get her to go in there, but she's always like, I don't like going in it. My throat clogs up. Well, and then, uh, it does. And then so <laughs> I, I'm kind of I'm kind of good on them now because I think the one that we're going to go to, it could potentially have a basement. And we could be the, back the victims. Drops off. You could be the victim, not me. And that, I'm just guys, kidding. I'm gonna forever be weirded out about that guy with the studded tuxedo. Like that was wild. He he was probably just a customer in that pawn shop. Oh, and they just made him do it. Yeah, they probably just captured his butt. I didn't even think Ugh, about it. Like, like that's that. what I was thinking, I was thinking about. Thinking when he I saw was him. in on it. Oh no! I, I felt thought like he, he was about to do it. I, I felt thought. like he was captured. I felt like because they woke him up, he was like a slave. That's crazy. Man, they should have rescued him then. I felt bad. But no, they just killed him for some reason. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, well, better Bless than him. better than living in that type of bondage, bro. That is not good. Anyways, yeah, that part. To be honest, at that part, I about I about lost interest in the movie. I ain't even gonna lie to you guys, but I, I hung in there, and we got past it. Um, it was a really good way to tie up some loose ends, though. I mean, they wanted each other dead, and he had to. Eventually, he had to get out of town anyway, so it all worked that out. That was the most bizarre way to tie up some loose ends. Like, he almost hit a... He, was, he had a donut and coffee and was walking across the street. <laughs> and the guy's like, the guy's like, oh, hell no. Nah. Like, I'm done with him. And then he was not done with him. In fact, he actually saw the craziest junk of his freaking I guarantee life. if they knew what they were about to get into, that it just kept it moving. They'd have been like, I you know what, swear. What else happened in this movie? I mean, let's talk about the fact that the dude sits there, jingles the key. He's like, and then busts through the door, loud as mess. <laughs> goes into the kitchen, cooks a whole meal, right? He did not cook no whole meal. He put toasters. <laughs> he yeah, but put, he did it so loud. He, yeah, he, he did like, it loud. Oh, geez. That's what he was like. He so. did it loud. And then and then he, not only that, he like touched all over that gun. like, And then thinks he can just wipe it off with a brush of a tissue. Yeah, he was like. No, he was like. He hit him with the, um, <laughs> but what really killed me is every time that dude goes into a bathroom, he just doesn't hear anything. No, he was in there. Like, Even when they're, when, they, it, when they're robbing. But if I was in the bathroom, well, I know at that, you would hear like the screams and the gas. And I'm guys, like, the, this is a true story. I actually know someone, we know someone who, the, you know, Rob, mm. one time oh, a yeah. restaurant, was sitting on the toilet, a restaurant got robbed. got robbed and this man was literally using the bathroom the whole time. And he told me he did hear stuff going on, but he didn't get out. But so I don't know. He just cowered in the bathroom. <laughs> Dang, that changes things. I didn't know that. Oh, Wasn't well, he in charge? Yeah, he was. But <laughs> this man loves his diet coke. No, his diet pill, right? No Coke Zero. Coke Zero. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, that was Rob. Anyways, uh, side note. <laughs> I like Rob. He used to just try to tell me that Dan Marino was better than Tom Brady. I wasn't trying to hear it. But yeah, I like. But I like Rob. Yeah, about we argued a lot about football. Um. Really good movie, though. And then what else happened? Let's talk about the fact that if you're going to go sit on the toilet in someone else's house, 
someone that you're marked to kill and there's a potential that just bring the gun with come you back to the nest <laughs> dude just sit on the toilet with the gun like it, but why even use their toilet save that for later why are you even doing that there what do you mean why you gotta use the bathroom there what if you gotta go uh, what if his job is to stay there in case the perpetrator enters his home <laughs> Why would that? Who's who would assign you that job? What was the guy's name? Marcellus. Marcellus. He assigned him that job. Okay. That's why he got killed. He got killed because he was work. He, he wouldn't stop working for Marcellus. <laughs> he liked the money. Remember, oh. he gave him the whole. Oh spill. yeah, because Nick, like, Yo, Nick Fury gave it, it up and he didn't. Remember, he was like, "What you gonna do? You ain't gonna make no money. You gonna be a bum. You ain't gonna be nothing a bum." Yeah. He made a whole deal about it. <laughs> yeah. And the guy was like, "Well, I'll walk the killed. earth until I figure it out." Yeah, and then he got killed. So, uh, just a really, really good movie. I'll be honest with you guys, man. I didn't really know what to make of the movie a lot of the real time when I was watching it because I just didn't know what to make of it. Right? Like, well, I was kind of the thing for me really is good. I was I was anticipating different stuff, but different stuff was happening than what I was anticipating, and it was just kind of mind blowing in that way. Because I'm telling you what, when they walked in that pawn shop. I was not expecting that joke. <laughs> thrown off is the word I would use. Yeah, I was so thrown off. Even there when they were go. sitting there talking in like the entranceway garden, I'm sitting there looking at them like statues the whole time because I'm just like, <laughs> this is so weird. Like, why is everything so weird? It was it, it th just an interesting story, just an interesting movie. It's I so really, odd. it was well done though because it was just sporadic. Like, <laughs> it yeah. had me guessing the whole time because I'm sitting there wondering how the heck is that first scene relevant to anything. Like I've thought about that for like a, the first hour and a half, and then I realized maybe it's not at all, and then it came back. And then and then there's obviously what was what was the guy's name Bruce Willis? You done told me once. What was his name? Oh, Butch. Butch. And then his story was completely unrelated. Like you know, <laughs> he didn't work for the mob or anything. He was just a boxer. No, he worked for Marcellus. He it, threw was gonna throw the thing. Well, I don't. Was it that he was working for him, or was it like, well, hey, yeah, either throw he, it or we're gonna like cripple you? I think he did work for him. So he like some, went in with the. But then he was like, hey, I really want to work for you and profit with you. No, I think he works for him in the sense that, like, the boxing ring is run by Marcellus. Well, the mob runs boxing. Right. Like, so so basically, that's the only reason he worked for him. He just was a boxer for him. So if you're a boxer, you essentially work for the mob, is what you're saying? Maybe. That's what I was saying. I thought he was essentially maybe a hostage. That, and because, yeah. because, I mean, no, no man wants to go out there and get beat up, especially mm -hmm. by someone less than them. Uh like when people say people throw for sports and it happens a lot, but it would just be tough to want to do that. Yeah, I'm still so convinced the Panthers did that against the Broncos. Like I'm still convinced. It's happened. 100%. I believe it because we just. I'm telling you, that was, but that was he fun. was unrelated. Like, and then he was. It was all about a watch. So, like that guy obviously oh, didn't I care about. Oh, I forgot about that weird watch. He didn't care about anything in a sense. Like, you know, he killed two people. He beat a man to death. Had no remorse for it. And then, but he was really sympathetic about his dad's watch. So I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, so what was about that? Well, he had some dad issues, I guess. I don't know. Maybe when a dude has dad issues, they're just violent and sociopathic. I don't know. Right. So I was, when I was sitting there watching that, I was just thinking, if I was that guy, I would never want to go to the military because they keep dot getting killed off and having to ha hand that weird booty watch to somebody. Oh, uh, yeah. They were yeah. sticking it. Uh, like multiple people stuck that thing up their butt. Which was weird. Right. If my dad... I'm not wearing that on my wrist. Like, I just feel like that's unsanitary. I don't care how many times you bleach that thing. 1940s people were putting it up their butt. That is not clean. It's almost like he said, well, they captured me and they don't have a right to this watch. But in a sense, it's like they captured me, but I don't really think I'm going to let them force me to shove a watch up my butt, <laughs> especially for four years. And then imagine someone <laughs> grabbing it. Pulling it out, handing it to you Give while, while, to they're di <laughs> while they're dying. So, you know, their dying action is three fingers up their butt, right? Um, yeah, y'all know what time it is. And they hand it off to you and you're like, you know what? You're so touched in the moment. Like the, the emotions are just pouring in and you feel like God has tested you. He is putting you in this position. You're either going to be a piece of crap. Not literally, but you're not gonna you're not gonna accept this, or you're gonna shove it up your butt, take one for the team. And what would you do? Boy, I'd sidearm Aaron Rodgers that damn watch. <laughs> I ain't sticking nothing on my butt. Yo, wild. Like if it's life and death, maybe, but voluntarily, no, sir. Uh, 
Especially a watch. And like, after it was in like? someone's for five and then yours for two. Why would that man even tell that kid that? I feel like at that point it would rust. Don't you think? I'm just wondering why did that man tell that kid that? Like He's, He needed him to know, like, hey, this is the ugly truth of life. <laughs> like, your dad wanted you to have this, but I don't want you to think. It's gr- it's all grand because it, it wasn't all grand to get here. It, it was a lot. It took a lot of booty holes. <laughs> Gosh. Ugh. You just said booty holes. I know. <laughs> I'm going to get blocked. Out of everything. what Another thing in this movie, it was hard. It was hard on the ears, man, because there was so much. Uh, MFs? No, not. The, the MFs were cool. It was the N-word oh, for yeah. me, bro. I was like, sheesh. Uh, Jeez. I mean, when I hear it, I don't just like start crying or nothing. But but you know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's just not, not common to hear. It's just not common to hear, especially like the hard ER in that context. So. Um, and then another thing is YouTube does not play about that at all. Even Dave Chappelle said it in a special on our other channel, and they completely blocked the video. So. They even gave us the time that it was at and said, delete that. <laughs> like Absolutely. They gave you the second it was there. So, so on yeah. this one, it might give like 400 seconds. So if you guys notice that the that stuff's blocked out and censored, man, I'm not someone who's over here trying to censor the video. I'm not that person at all. But damn it, I'm not about to put out stuff and just give them every opportunity to take all the money that we earn over here because I'm trying to right. do that to myself. Which on Patreon, on. you guys notice probably on Game of Thrones just how much we have to censor our episodes. It's not our fault. We yeah. don't want to censor it. It's crazy. It's more work it's, to censor it. But and, and I'm sure you can notice the difference. It's it's a lot. Yeah, man. Like We don't try to do that at all, but at some point, we can't just do it all for nothing, you know? And yeah. uh, not complaining at all. We're just letting you guys know. Yeah, we're just letting you know it does. It literally doesn't pass. We're going to have to cut some of that stuff out. Right, so. like not maybe other people can get away with it, and that's cool. But we cannot, and we're yeah, just letting you know that. they can lose their channel. I ain't. Right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I'm sure we missed a lot because this is one of those movies probably a lot smarter than I am. It's a cult, cult hit, cult classic. Maybe it's not even. Maybe that's not the right terminology for it. But people love this freaking movie, man. And if for it to be iconic in our households growing up, it ha- something had to hit with this movie. Something, you know what right? I'm Maybe my dad thought that girl was hot or something. <laughs> I don't know. But Which, uh, she was familiar, and I, I feel like she was blonde somewhere. So that's why I, I said something about her hair being a wig because I, I swear I know her. She's just a blonde. I don't. She was not familiar to me. Oh. I ain't never seen her. But this movie's definitely a classic. If there's anything that we missed, which I mean, guys, come on now. There's a thousand things we missed. Please let us know. Uh, we're obviously very interested. And it's very interesting, man, because when we when we get done with these movies, we see so many comments that I really just wish that I knew going into the movie. Right. It would have made me seem so much smarter. And this is like, our first time watch, so of course we're gonna miss like the timeline was stuff. throwing me yes. off in it. It was hard to focus on the story. That's what I was trying to say. Like there was so much happening that I was just thrown off by that it was hard to really focus on everything. But at the end of the day, man, this was a movie about about conversations and dialogue. No CGI, nothing crazy. Just amazing acting. Um completely completely carried the movie uh did samuel L. jackson and i thought i thought bruce willis was great in this john thought, travolta was I thought, okay he was I, thought, all right. I thought john travolta was hilarious he was okay i mean i, I thought all of them were funny honestly. john travolta played his part perfectly actually i just don't really know how much i love this character because he was just very goofy which yeah. comment below what's your favorite john travolta movie what's your favorite samuel L. jackson movie and what's your favorite bruce willis movie mm-hmm. right, right now because i want to see them all yeah, we definitely need to get into some more Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, <laughs> For absolutely. sure, because that man is cracking me up right now. Yeah, he's hilarious. Uh, all right, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next video.